This quick tutorial will take you on a tour of the basic features of Pinnacle Studio and will work for version 16 or 17 of Pinnacle Studio Ultimate. When you first open Pinnacle Studio, you may have the sample video already loaded with clips on the timeline down here. These are just samples. To remove them, click File, New, Movie to clear everything up and start fresh. The software screen is divided into three sections. Over here is where you will have your clips and files. This is your preview window. And this down here is your timeline where you're going to be doing your editing. Now you need to have your clips and files here in Pinnacle so you can start editing them. And you can see that I've already done that. But if you click the import button at the top of the screen and select the location on your computer where your files have been saved, you'll be able to pull them in right here into Pinnacle. By now, you should have already copied your clips off the DVP cameras and saved them into your group's folder on the shared drive. So when you click import, you will browse there to that folder and grab your stuff. When importing, you can select everything and import all of your files that you need to complete your project, including video clips, background images and files, sound effects, and music. So once your files have been imported, like I've already done here, they're going to show up right here. And now you can drag and drop them down onto the timeline below. So I can grab this clip, for example, and drop it on the timeline. Um, the timeline is made up of several tracks that are layered on top of each other. The things on the top track will show up on top of the things below it on the timeline. For example, you may have a video clip on the timeline and add text on the track above it so that the text displays on top of the video. When dragging clips down onto the timeline, I like to leave that top track open just in case I need to put something on top. When I first pull a clip down onto Pinnacle, you'll notice there's a big yellow progress bar. And it's going to be turning green slowly as it processes. It's really important to wait. As hard as it is, I know, to have that patience. You need to wait until the clip is finished processing before editing or even trying to watch the clip. Otherwise, it's going to be really choppy. Across the top of the timeline are tools to help you edit your film. You can click here to adjust the volume of each track, here to add music built into Pinnacle, and here to add titles and credits. After you add titles and credits to the timeline, you can move them around or drag them up onto the track above your video right up here to have that text display on top of your clip. You can also then click here to record a voiceover or narration for your video. These items will be added on the timeline wherever your cursor is located. That's this red line. So if you want a title to go right here in between this piece and this piece, you're going to put your cursor here first before clicking on um, the title. If you're doing titles that are going to go on top of a clip, you can add them pretty much anywhere. I usually would put them either at the start or end of a video clip so that it doesn't split my clip up. Um, and once you add your title and it puts it on the timeline, you'll just click and drag and move it up on top of, um, of the timeline. Um, if you select a clip right up here, you can use these tools to split the clip. So if you put your cursor here, if you wanted to split this clip into two pieces, as long as this clip is selected, which you can tell it is because of the yellow-orange outline, if you click the little razor blade icon here, I know it doesn't really look like a razor blade, but if you click it, it will then split your clip into two. Um, you can also then delete clips off the timeline. So it'll delete whatever is selected in that orange-yellow color. So make sure that you are selecting the right thing before you click the trash can icon. You can also click delete on your keyboard if you want to remove something off of the timeline. Your preview window over here will show you how your video looks as you're editing and making changes. And then tools over here will help you edit, um, change the editing options for the timeline, such as uh, snapping clips together and when they get close. So like if I'm moving a clip around, it'll snap together. Um, and how clips behave when you drag them onto the timeline and move them around, and those options are here. Since most of the time you're not going to finish all of your editing in one class period, you're going to have to save an in-progress file of your movie and continue working on it during next class. So to do that, you're going to click File, Save Movie As, and then you're going to save it. It'll save as an AXP file type, and that's fine. Um, you're going to save it in the same folder where you're keeping everything else for your movie. So your group will create a folder on the shared drive for your project, and all of your video clips, all of your background files, music, sound effect files, everything that you need for the project will be in that folder. And you will also save 
a, um, an in-progress file, the AXP file type, of your movie in that same folder so that you can get to it and all group members can get to it at a later time if you need to edit the next class period. Next time you come to class and you want to pick up and keep editing where you left off, open up Pinnacle and click File, Open, and browse to where you've saved that in-progress file. And then you'll click Open. And that should load up your project from last time, and you can keep working on it right from where you had left off. If a different person has logged in to edit um, in your group, or you've switched computers since the last time you were in class, maybe you're editing a different group member's computer, Pinnacle may have a pop-up that appears right here that will prompt you to remind Pinnacle where all of your clips are located. It's going to have a bunch of yellow question mark boxes down here, and it's going to act like it doesn't know where those clips are. And it's going to say, do you want to find them? And you say yes. And then you go into your group's folder and remind Pinnacle where those clips are located. So just say yes, browse to your project folder, and then Pinnacle will go through and fix the errors. When you are completely finished editing and you're ready to turn in your finished movie, not your in-progress file, your finished movie, you must export using the export button up here at the top. You'll also save your finalized movie back into that same project folder you've been using for everything else. And I want to show you this because it's a common mistake. When you click export and the box pops up, it's obviously going to be saved as a file. Um, I think the default file type is AVI, but um, the MP4 or MPEG4 or Windows Media, these two file types are a little bit smaller of a file type. They take up less space on your um, computer. So I usually have kids change to like Windows Media, for example. Once you've done that and you click the Start Export button to export your whole project out into one file, it's going to ask you where to save it. You need to make sure you select your same DVP folder with your group where everything else is saved. But the big thing that people forget to do is to give the file a name. So um, you have to give your project a name. You have to type something here before you click the Save button, or it's not actually going to export anything at all. And it's going to look like it's exporting, but then nothing's ever going to happen because you never gave it a file name, so it doesn't know what to do. So just don't forget to do that step when you finish. If you have any questions, just let me know, but that's the basics of using Pinnacle.